that's impressive what you've done, Lena. I've got to say because um, that actual one you've done, that's one I usually do with my students in the first term. So they usually have sort of three months to do that. Okay. Hi. If I would tell you that I am dyslexic, very dyslexic. I failed all my maths when I was at school, like very bad. And I, I think I'm also, I have the number lexic thing. Dyscalculia, dyscalculia? I have definitely that. Would you believe if I told you that I coded me, <laughs> if I coded a device in Max for Life in four weeks? This one. Would you believe me? Because part of that story is true. Because I did learn how to do it in four weeks, but then I used like four months to actually troubleshoot and make it work. <laughs> but I did it. I'm just saying, if I can do it, I, I'm pretty sure every single one of you could do it. I got this amazing opportunity to learn Max for Live in four weeks from an Ableton certified trainer called Mark Towers. In about half an hour, I'm gonna be having my first Max for Live lesson. Basically, I am terrified, but excited at the same time. And in those lessons first, I learned how to make a filter, very easy peasy filter. Then I learned like three different ways of creating sequencers. And then I was like, hey, you know what? I've got this far, let's go further. Let me make my own device my own one okay so today was the second lesson of my max for life trip uh, trip to become a coder the plan <laughs> the plan for the next two weeks is that before the next lesson i will be researching uh different plugins different things <laughs> i'm gonna make myself a plan on a device that i want to make and so I got this amazing idea. I was like, ooh, what could I make? What could I make? What could I make? And I was thinking, yes, harmonies, harmonies. Like the ultimate device for harmonies. That's, that's what's my idea. <sighs> that's the plan. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go and study now, bye. So I told this to Mark and he was like, yeah, sure, we can do that ambitious maybe <laughs> no i no he was super supportive i used the sequences i learned i used this filter that i learned and then we needed to just put them all together put some max for live device glitter on the top and there we go we had four and a almost five months later we had a device I personally think that we might avoid learning Max for Live because we think that let's leave it to the coders, let's leave it to the enthusiasts. But actually, it's not that difficult. Like, I never thought that I'm this level of a nerd. But, surprise, surprise. Like, I was surprised if I could learn it, you could totally learn it. So I was surprised how fast, in only in like five months, I managed to create a device, something that I felt like I needed in my production work. So I was not depending on other people to create the plugins I wanted, but I created them for myself. And it's like an extra step for independency and getting the sound as a music producer, the sound that you want. I personally, I think, this is a good one. I felt like Max for Live is a bit like you're in an escape room. You know that where the goal is, but you just need to figure out in a correct way from one thing to another, what is your flow? What is your way to the door? That's it. And actually it was much more easier than I thought. Today is the week three, no, week four. Today's the last session with Mark and I am very sad. I'm very sad that this is gonna be over and I'm worried about what's gonna happen after this. Am I gonna be able to continue the practice by myself? I am also worried, am I gonna find resources that I feel comfortable? Um, I, this far, I haven't found anything yet that really like speaks to me. Like in the, something like this needs to be approachable because otherwise like, it would be way too intimidating for me to start 
start studying it. Anyway, I'm gonna see Mark now and uh, let's finish this, 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 this device. So, I'm just encouraging you to try it out. Should I make a beginner's video about it? Let me know down in the comments. But hey, let's have a look at what I created. I can walk through it, I can show what it is, and you can also download it for free. Just sign up for my email list, please, if you want to. But please, because I used five months to do this. <laughs> Hello. Hi. It is 26th of October, 10.51, bit rainy day. I'm very hungover. <laughs> and I just finished the Max for Live device that I've been working on. <laughs> as much as I was like thinking, yay, I'm gonna make this happen in one month. Yeah, that's not, that, that was not gonna happen. But hey, it works now. <laughs> so I just gonna wanna show you quickly, how does it work? What does it do? So basically it's a, it creates harmonics. It creates two different harmonics. You can filter the harmonics as well as you can change the quality and the rate. We have the original signal here. So let's listen actually that without anything. Like that, okay? So then I press harmony on, harmony one on and then put example plus five. And there we go. You can hear that I have created a harmonic for the signal. And what I can do then is uh, filter it. Here, there's the different bands. And there's also resonance and cutoff. So you can also change those two for the filter. Yeah, so then we have these two different uh, pat like blocks here so what they are so the first one is for the harmony one and the second one is for the harmony two and basically it's a sequencer so this was my crazy idea and i kind of like because i learned first to make a sequencer and then i was like hey i could use that for a harmony it pans the harmony yeah so it's a panel so you can see there's a little r and little l so right and left so what you can do with these blocks here when you slide your mouse is that you can pan the harmony to go left and right on your uh, behind that normal melody. So it's a bit like an auto pan type of control. So on the balls under the sequencer, you can see the rate on how, what's the rate of the panning. So if you want the rate of the panning to go slower, so you can go to this rate one, which is the harmony ones, right? And go example four and D. Now the rate of the panning is much slower and so on. And then of course we can choose quality factor of the harmony transposition uh, from here. And that's for both of the harmony. Okay, so we can create another one. So let's create the example here, minus uh, 12. So let's go octave lower. And then I could go half there, half there. And then we have a wet dry control and that is how much harmonies are we hearing and how much are we hearing the actual original signal i'm actually pretty proud that i've created this of course like a lot of it is mark helping me <laughs> anyway so then there's this um button here extends the plugin or device and then here you can activate another type of sequencer and this is the send effect so we can actually uh, make this control example the send. So I could example make this sequencer control the delay. How cool is that? So I turn it on. I've created a little pattern here and I go to track. So which is the track that we want to control it from? So we put the vocal track that we're on and then uh, mixer from the seven. So second option device mixer and then parameter is delay. So this is now the amount of the delay. It's actually controlling the sense in the session. So look, that went gray. And then we have the rate of that as well. So I could put that example. So it grows much slower. You can see that's right there. Mm -hmm. 
And there we go. So now I managed to add like a growing slope uh, re uh, delay for the, for the track. So that's what I have created. There's other things that I have thought that it could have. So example, it could have a scale control. So uh, it can actually transpose things in scale. You know, all these kind of things that I've been thinking that I could develop it for. And uh, I just want to hear from you guys. Like, what do you think? Go and download it below. You can have it for free. Tell me what you thought. Thank you so much for watching and thank you Mark for your inspirational lessons. I'm so freaking glad I did them. I'm so glad that I keep on actually working with Max for Live and I will definitely keep on doing more stuff with it. Please let me know down in the comments if you like me to do a beginner's like a course or beginner's videos about Max for Live because if you want to learn it but you just never got your head around it. So please let me know that down below. Please subscribe to this channel. Please hit the bell icon and I'll see you next time. Bye. <sighs> That's the plan. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go and study now. Bye. Thank you.